No, do not land. Nope. Oh crap. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Mini 4 Pro, the new one from DJI, the little mini ultralight. And we're gonna do a range test today. I'm up on the little peak here over in the mountains. And I gotta say, honestly, it's a little bit windier than I thought it would be up here. It's maybe like five to 10. I think it's blowing from this direction. So we might get some crosswind, but regardless, uh, I wanna get this range test done so you guys can see how far this thing can go and how the signal is on this, on the new OcuSync 4 technology. Remember RC2 controller? Anyway guys, we're gonna put this thing up on 100% charge, fly out as far as we can here. We'll see how far this thing goes, so stay tuned and let's get started with the Mini 4 range test. All right guys, so I'm gonna launch this thing just ASAP, just right in my hand here. The controller takes the longest to boot up, so I'm just waiting for the controller so we're not burning battery power when we boot the drone up. So let's boot this bad boy up. I'm just gonna hand launch it here. I'm gonna record the screen for you so you can see what's going on on the screen record. Let's go ahead and launch, guys. All right, so just flying straight out this way. And I'm not gonna go very high because I know that this thing doesn't need too much height to be successful here. So I'm recording the screen for you. And what do we wanna do, guys? I want to make sure that I have these sensors off. I don't think I turned them off yet, so. We're gonna turn off the obstacle avoidance, okay? So just turn that off to save some power. And I'm just flying directly straight out in front of me. Now, a lot of people are confused about the height, right? So it's only saying 5.6 feet, but obviously it's higher than that if I look down here. Um, that's because what these drones do is they record their elevation at launch as zero. So any higher than your launch point is gonna be an upwards elevation. So since I'm in the mountains and the mountains are going up and down, uh, it's going to just stay at 5.6 until I move the drone up and down, right? So just a little thing. And when I researched um, how they test this drone for maximum flight time, keep in mind guys, I have the plus battery in here. I forgot to mention it's the higher capacity battery. So it's supposed to fly for 45 minutes in laboratory conditions. Um, and those conditions they say is about 14, 13 and a half, 14 miles per hour. And that's pretty slow. I've never tried this um, cruise control feature. So I just wanna show you that real fast. Let's go into control here. So you go into button customization and you see how I put the C2 button here on cruise control right there. So that should be the right bottom button. So I'm gonna try that right now. I'm just gonna get right around. Whoa, I'm just zooming in, sorry about that. <laughs> that looked a little weird. I was like, I'm not going that fast. Uh, I'm gonna go right around 14 miles per hour. And then I'm gonna right click. There we go, cruise control enabled, do you see that? So now it's going down to 9.8. That was weird. I want to go a little faster. So I'm going to push up on the right stick till we're right about 13 or 14, because that's just too slow. I'm talking about the bottom left of the screen, guys, in that orange. All right, is that going to work? Okay, so we're set right around 13 and a half. And that is the laboratory test speed for that 45 minutes of flight time. So you see that on the bottom on the left of the screen. You see that orange, we have it locked. There's a little lock icon that's showing we're locked at 13 and a half miles per hour. I kind of want to go a little faster than that just because there's wind out there and it's like, you know, this isn't a laboratory, so it's not going to even matter that much. I almost want to go more like 14. Okay, can we just stay right around 14, 15? So what this thing will do is when you are flying full throttle in normal mode, it'll go about 
I think it was 23 or 27 miles per hour, and that's not the most efficient speed apparently. So just trying to fly at the most efficient speed. And like I was saying, keep in mind, I mean, it's windy a little bit over here, five to 10 coming from the side. And you can see that on the craft. If you look at the bottom left of the screen over here, you see the compass and you can see how the horizon little translucent bottom half of the compass is tilted to the right. So that means the craft is, is fighting some wind coming from, I guess the right, because it's leaning or left. I don't know. It's hard to tell. DJI kind of has this backwards sometimes. So a little bit difficult to tell, but anyway, we can tell it's not perfectly level. And also when that blue kind of comes up a little on the front, on the top of it, that means it's kind of tilting forward. So I think what it was is the, uh, somebody said the side to side is backwards, but the front is correct or vice versa. I don't know. Maybe they fixed it. But guys, if you haven't seen my unboxing flight test of this thing, go ahead and check in the description and I'll have it also pop up on the top right for you to check the series on the Mini 4 Pro. And I was blown away in the flight test, man. They really upgraded some crazy stuff with this drone. Um, you know, just the software in general. I mean, this thing could literally, I got it lost in the woods down under canopy and I hit return to home and it literally just finds a path on its own to get out. It was just unbelievable. So looks like this might be a good one uh, for tracking possibly. And that's gonna be the next test. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that tracking test. Because every other DJI drone I've tested on this road in the woods, you know, it's just crashed into this one tree. So uh, we're gonna see if the Mini 4 Pro crashes into that one tree. Because this, remember this has obstacle avoidance in uh, 360 obstacle sensing. So I'm hoping it's gonna do better. The Air 3 crashed into the tree twice in the same video when I was doing the tracking test on the, the Air 3. And also the, um, the Mavic 3 crashed in that tree a couple times as well. So we're gonna see how this one does. Anyway, guys, uh, sorry I'm talking, blabbing so much, but I just wanted to show you a couple of the features. So remember, um, we do have video recording capability, and I'm not going to record too much. I don't have an SD card in here, so it's just going to record directly to the craft when I do click the shutter record button, right? So I'm going to click that right now for 4K 30 frames per second. I don't want to use up too much power, so I'm just going to do brief little recordings of the 4K just to show you how, you know, it looks in 4K out here. And then I'm just going to sh shut it off like that. So we'll just do a couple of brief ones. Okay, but getting back to the craft, I know I sidetracked there for a second. Sorry about that. As you can see, we have super clear picture, and that's because this is DJI's OcuSync 4 technology which is the best they've ever had. And they're finally including it into the mini series. Remember the mini one just had a Wi-Fi, and then they went up to the OcuSynx in mini two, mini three had the OcuSync three. And then we have, now we have OcuSync four in the mini four. The Air three also had OcuSync four. So this is the same exact controller, the RC two, as the, um, the Air three that I got for demo. If you guys also are interested in the Air 3 drone, uh, go ahead and check out. I have a full series on that one on my channel as well, doing all these same types of tests. So anyway, just cruising out at a slow 15 miles per hour because I'm using the cruise control. And the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of you guys requested this. Um, and it uh, might save some power too and get us farther, but it's definitely slower, right? I mean, you give it another eight miles per hour and you're going to get to your destination faster. So we'll see if that makes a difference. Um, this battery, guys, check it out. I'm going to go into the settings screen again. And I wanted to show you, uh, is it safety? Yeah. And then we're going to go down. Okay. Yeah, I want to make sure I have all that off. I want to go down to the battery. 
and there it is so this battery as you can see it has 12 cycles on it you see that on the bottom right there battery cycle count 12 cycles so this is a good test to see if cycling your battery really makes a difference i do have another battery in my bag that only has one cycle on it one or two so what i might do actually guys at the end of this video is so stay tuned because i might do a another one of these range tests just really quick i'll fast forward it for you but at least you'll be able to see possibly the difference on if you cycle your battery up past around 10 cycles before you do a flying and see if it can fly longer versus just like the first or second cycle on the battery so we're gonna i think i'm just gonna throw it up and do that in the ending of this video so stay tuned anyway what's her distance 12,700 and about 12,900 feet sorry and uh, one of the cool things that so that's about two and a half miles almost and i'll be having that mileage milestones pop up guys so like i usually do where like when one mile's reached i'll have it pop up on the screen two three four and so on but we're at 71 percent, and it says we have 30 minutes of flight time left where i'm standing the wind just completely disappeared so i'm not sure how it's going to be over there but i'm just trying to stay as low as possible until we start losing signal anyway what i was saying is the bottom oh there's some birds there and some crows the bottom of the screen do you see a new addition is that h so just like the their fpv drone the dji avata and their dji race drone the first one um remember they used to have that little home icon and that was awesome and a lot of people were asking man i wish i wish there was that home icon on their other camera drones that's just my camera turning off real quick a lot of people were asking for this home point and they finally included it in the software so as you turn the drone you'll see it when we come back home that h there at the bottom center will actually remove move around the screen um, to show you where your home point is so it's pretty cool and then when you're coming up on your home point it shows you exactly where you are in the ground it showed that in the uh the flight test so make sure you check out that video and they've also included now uh, AR columns. So there's like AR on the screen for return turn the homes, which is kind of neat. It's like a green little arrow pathway, cylindrical pathway that shows you which way it's going to travel to go home. I thought that was kind of neat when I did my uh, woods test um, to try to get it lost in the woods and return to home. Anyway, cruising at 15 miles per hour. Uh, I am feeling the wind where I'm standing, but maybe definitely very much different out there. Uh, so cruise control, guys. This is how it is. It looks like we're going to fly over the road for just a second here. Um, and this might be a good instance to test what we can do in cruise mode. Can we turn the head? Yes, we can. See how I turned it to the right a bit? and can we also strafe left and right let's try to just push to the right a little yep see that i just gave it a jog to the right to kind of get off the road and that worked perfectly so it looks like you can do anything it'll just maintain the speed in um, cruise control and it's also locked it's locking the horizontal speeds as well if you look at the bottom left where our speeds are so that would mean that if you're flying up and out it should lock the vertical speed as well that's kind of what it's it's telling me i haven't tried that but uh, we shall see possibly in a different review so wind is kind of nailing it um gosh yeah i wish it was not windy today but it's just kind of coming and going you know it's going to be different out where the drone is but uh no no resolution loss at all in the screen now this screen is a high definition picture that it's transmitting guys through the ocusync 4 wireless technology uh dji they have the best in my opinion <laughs> 
uh, video and control link technology I've ever seen, at least in the consumer drone. Um, you know, because look at our distance, 18,400 feet, and it's as clear as a bell. I do have the antennas orientated and the controller pointed at it, you know, with no obstacles in the way. So that's kind of why it's, uh, it's able to just fly perfectly. But, you know, that, that goes to show, too, is it's flying over a little bit of a rural subdivision here. Uh, this is kind of out where my mother's cabin is. And I just wanted to show you the transmission. So see how it's in auto? I'm on dual band. Whoops. That was strange. That seemed like a glitch. Just... Battery level is low. Aircraft will return to the home All right. point in 10 Canceling. Seconds. Return to home. You heard that? So I don't think this is the best speed to go out at in this kind of environment. Because look at this. We have already have 57% depleted and we're only not even four miles out yet the air three gosh that went like seven ish miles so probably because of the little bit of wind and also i don't think this speed is really good for this environment because you know i'm up at like 7500 feet and the air is thinner up here the oxygen so this does not seem to be the best speed but anyway what i was saying is the video transmission let me try to go back there and hopefully it won't glitch us out. Uh, it's choosing the best signal for the interference around it. So I don't mess with this at all. And I've never had any trouble with a clear picture. As you can see, I can still, you know, use the gimbal. I'm turning it up and down here uh, with no issues whatsoever. So I'm probably going to turn around, guys, at about... 50% because this is the first time I've done this with this drone and I don't know exactly what it's gonna it's gonna do and how it's gonna fight this wind and I do know in the flight test though it will fly to below zero percent and you can still you can still go for it and the batteries will actually drop to below three volts so I'm hoping this isn't the battery I used in that flight test where I dropped it below three volts I may have messed up this battery, but we'll see. I have another good battery in my bag and I might just do the same exact thing later on in this video. So really just stay tuned and you know, I'll speed it up. So this video isn't incredibly long, about 22,400 feet. So that's just around four miles and I'm getting no signal issues whatsoever. Not even a hop, skip or a jump in the FPV. Um, I think it's time to turn around just in case we hit some wind, okay? So a little bit disappointed in the distance here, but I think it's because of the wind and possibly this battery, but at least you know that four or so miles, it's giving us no problem and it's super clear. So let's not have to go and get this one hopefully so i'm going to go ahead and hit return to home i'm just going to do a i'm going to stop cruise i'm going to hit the software return to home hold it in return to home and wow there is our oh no it's trying to go up <laughs> maybe i shouldn't have done that right that was stupid well, I guess you'll see what happens when it, uh, if it can make it back. Well, it only went up to 36 feet. I remember this is the smart return to home. So it's just doing whatever it thinks it needs to do. I can move the gimbal. That's what I was talking about, the H there. So you see how the H is now in AR on the screen. And it also has this column it looks like it's orange this time because it's like telling me there's a hazard of it possibly not making it. But this is also an addition. Check this out. Let's see if the drone shadow. No, it's not showing up at this height. But it also puts an AR drone shadow on the ground. I probably don't even want to do any type of recording because we're 
44% guys and we're f just about four miles away. Yikes. So maybe I did kind of ruin this battery. So this will be a good comparison. So remember to hang out till the end of the video because I am, I am going to put in that barely used battery and I'm going to do this again. Okay. I'm just going to speed it up so you can see the difference. But if you guys were curious about the compass too, uh, I'm moving the controller and do you see that on the bottom left, the compass, the drone is facing me that you can see the H there is my home point. And then I'm moving the controller left and right. And you can see that green arrow pointing at the drone moving as I move it left and right. And then it's kind of cool because it turns bright green when it's in the correct position. So you just want it to be facing the drone uh, for the best signal. Oh, now it's green again. Hmm, look at that line, turned green. So now it thinks it has enough um, battery power to return home. And look at this, it's returning home pretty quick at 26, 27 miles per hour. So we may have just really turned around way too soon. Might have some wind to the back of it. And also maybe that 13, 14 miles per hour is not the most efficient speed in this kind of environment, like I was saying. Maybe it just hit it in normal full throttle definitely not sport sports gonna suck too much power but go ahead and uh, I'm gonna on this on the next one guys I think I'm gonna full throttle it in normal mode which is gonna go this speed 26 27 miles per hour and I'm gonna cruise control it right there and I bet you it's gonna get way farther um, but at least this gives you an idea you know what I'm sorry I'm gonna turn off this stupid I'm gonna mute that. That's probably bugging a lot of you guys. So you can mute now the uh, return to home. I don't think you can turn it down. You can turn down all the other voice. Let's try that. Now see how you can't turn down the volume on the return to home beep? You can just mute it. But that mutes everything, so be careful with that. Because uh, it stays muted when you turn the controller back on and off. So you have to re-enable it. So just flying here a steady 26, 27 miles per hour. And it looks about the same to me, that horizon line, if you look on the bottom left of the compass, looks about the same type of wind hitting it as we went out. Maybe a little less in the front. So that's probably why we're coming back a little easier. But I don't know, it's just swirling and gusting. You know. And the reason why it says that high altitude fly with caution on the top left is because I'm up at 7,500 feet elevation ground level. So I guess it senses it's, it's high up and the air's thinner. So that's probably why that uh, warning always comes up, up here in the woods, you know. 33% left. It's saying we have around 11, 12 minutes left of flight time. And we're still about two miles away. And we're 32%. So I think we're going to be okay, but never know, man. With these range tests, sometimes the battery just drops at the end. I really hope I didn't ruin this battery. This was the battery. Gosh, I must have cycled this battery 10 times to do the mini range test and i remember when I, the mini three and then i remember when i was unboxing the mini four i was comparing them and i must have mixed up the batteries because guys if you didn't know these are this exactly the same batteries as the mini three pro comes with the plus batteries i got the plus fly more combo so a lot of some of you were actually asking the question too are all the batteries plus in the plus fly more combo and I can honestly say, yes, it was for what I got. They're all the plus. There's no normal batteries in that plus combo. So you get three plus highest capacity batteries, which is the 45 minute flight time. And then if you just buy the normal combo, you have the 35. But you know, that's never, in real world, it will never fly that far, right? 
or that long because you're not in a laboratory where DJI tests it. So the I'm just going to tilt the gimbal down again, see what our picture's like. So you'll never test it in that kind of laboratory environment. They test it. So in in real life, you're probably going to get and this and they claim it's from 100% to zero. So they're really stretching it when you get to zero because I did the flight test in the park with this thing and I killed this battery to below zero and it went down to like 2.6 to 2.1 one cell was 2.6 one cell was 2.8 before it actually forced it to land I couldn't have any input in the control sticks so I'm thinking that's probably why this battery ain't that ain't that great some people are asking too guys I'm going to try this real quick uh, so it's in return to home looks like we're going to be okay but I'm going to try to go into safety First of all, I want to look at the battery. You see that thing? So we're at 3.45 volts right now. Voltage is starting to get low. Getting a little bit worried here. Gosh, are we going to make it? What I wanted to do though is I wanted to see, somebody was asking if you can go and turn off. See, it is off. So it's you can't turn it off, the obstacle avoidance action you can't do anything with it when it's in return to home you see on the top right there you're going to see the sensors are all on the uh, 360 omnidirectional sensing so you so you know so you guys know you cannot shut that off geez 27 satellites amazing looking at our uh briefly just looking at our power 20% battery we have about six and a half seven minutes six minutes and that's going to fluctuate a lot with the wind so where I'm standing the wind is blasting right now sideways it's like 20 miles per hour that's so weird it was zero a couple minutes ago so we're getting some gusts um, see how it's fluctuating up there by the Percentage is now 19. It's saying six six minutes, 55 seconds, seven minutes. The the wind's just swirling, and that's why it doesn't really matter, dude. The uh, a few miles per hour here or there, if it's windy like this, it will not matter. It'll probably help you once the wind gusts back behind you if you're going faster. So these little these little tiny things are just. Um, you know, it just doesn't matter a few miles per hour here or there in this kind of environment. Especially since the air is thin up here, the wind's swirling. But look at that video. I mean, it's been rock solid the whole time out. And remember, guys, the I'm going to do this again. In this video, I'm just going to speed it up. So don't miss that because I want to put in that fresh battery that hasn't been used or dropped below three volts, which this one has. And I am going to um, do this again, like I was saying, and speed it up. So is there anything else we want to look at? I'm not even going to attempt to record. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you in the menu. This isn't going to use any power on the drone. So... It automatically, even if you have it off, like I was saying, turns back on the obstacle avoidance, which you cannot turn off. Uh, you can turn off the, this is a new setting here. See the AR settings right here? So you can actually turn off these AR graphics on the screen for return to home. So you can turn off the home point, which is that H. You can uh, return to home route. Oh, it's already here. Holy crap. And we have 12% left. <laughs> See that column there? So you can turn off the AR settings is what I was saying. So we did not push that one, man. Gosh, we went below 50%. Here she is. I'm gonna try to hand land it. Come on over, buddy. I'm just gonna grab it. And pull down 11 percent 10 percent actually 
So we, we could have gone, whoa, almost fell down there. <laughs> we could have gone way farther on this bad boy. Anyway, guys, what do we want to say about that first flight test? So impressive nonetheless. Don't even worry about going the speed that DJI is saying they tested at for the maximum flight time because that just does not matter up here. I know it can go way farther than that. So I am going to pop in the new fresh battery that only has one or two charges on it. Remember, this had 12 charges cycles and i went below three volts in the flight test on that battery so that just goes to show if you do think you destroy a battery it can still fly that far and everything seems fine all right guys here we are again uh, i think this might be a more of a nail biter i have a new battery that has two charges in it and this is the one that came with the mini 4 pro i think the other one i was using came with the mini 3 even though they're the same exact battery that one had more abuse on it so I'm just gonna power this thing up really quick. I'm gonna do the exact same flight. So I wanna get in position where I was and let's take off. Ooh. So fly straight out. And I'm just gonna go up a little bit. I think I was right around five feet, right? <laughs> so we're in normal mode, full stick forward. My right thumb is full stick. And while it's full stick, I'm gonna hit cruise control. Cruise control enabled. So we are gonna go, let's see if it can go any faster than this. 26, 27. Cruise speed updated, okay. If you hold it and you press it again, it will update the speed, cool. So that was is what I assigned the uh, C2 button member on the bottom of the controller as. So, it's this button right here. I'm showing on my hat cam here, the C2. And that's where I showed how you can adjust that in the menu there. So same exact flight, guys. Um, remember, there's no SD card in here. If I do record on the drone, I'm just gonna be doing brief recordings just to show uh, the 4K, which I think I did in the last flight. So remember, I'm gonna speed this up when it gets kind of boring. But that's just to show you what I did last time with the 4K 30. I think this is the only, I only did it once about this long. That's got a nice view so you can see that horizon plus the uh, ground there. And let's stop recording. So I'll just have that pop up briefly so you can see the quality of the camera in 4K 30 with no ND filters, no nothing. Okay. Let's turn off that hat cam, save some power. And what I do want to do is I want to see, yeah, so I still have the obstacle avoidance off and everything. So it's using its optimal efficiency without, at least while I'm flying out without um, using any of the power for the obstacle sensors. So the wind, it came up guys. The wind really came up. Look at that compass on the left of the screen. Oh my gosh. The wind is howling at it now. You can see the angle it's facing forward and I guess to the right really pretty hard to fight that wind. But look at the video, it's still super smooth. The gimbals work great on these crafts. 89%, 25 miles per hour. And hoping there's some gonna be some wind at the back when we come back, because I'm gonna push this one down to probably 40%. Okay, so hang on. This is gonna be a nail biter because I think there's gonna be wind at its back and I'm gonna fly back fast, about the same speed with the cruise, or not the cruise, I'm just gonna let it return to home like the last one did. At least we'll see the comparison on a fresh battery in a little bit more wind. It's, it may be the same thing, I don't know. But at least it's entertaining nonetheless, so. I'm gonna let you guys enjoy the flight. flight. I'm gonna speed it up a bit and uh, let's see how far it can get. I'll chime in once in a while so you guys know what's going on if I need to explain something. Did want to just show you the battery cycle count. So brand new battery, this is the first cycle fully charged. Okay. So this is how you know it's performing on a brand new battery versus that one that had 12 cycles and was brought down below three volts in the flight test.
right guys so just chiming in again and uh, I just wanted to make a comment about the flight route so it looks like we're a little farther to the left but regardless I'm gonna go ahead and strafe right a little bit because remember we did this sort of in the first one so I'm pressing right stick to the right so we can kind of get in the exact same flight path that we were with the other one. So I'm not going too far to the right, but I know, I think I flew right over, right in between these houses or right around here. So I just want to make it as, you know, repeatable as, pro as possible. Uh, one of the cool things is you can adjust the altitude up and down when you're in cruise. I'll watch this, I'm gonna pull down just a tad. See that? Height is now five feet, it was 5.9. I'll leave it right around here. The lower you can fly, uh, the more wind you're avoiding. So I believe I'm going to do that, okay. I'll just go kind of as low as possible without hitting any trees. On the return to home, if it is coming back, remember it has those obstacle avoidance sensors on so it will try to avoid stuff when it's returning home which it's really good at <laughs> remember watch that flight test and some of my other videos if you want to see how this thing can work its way out of tight woods to get back to you it's amazing anyway enjoy the rest of the flight i'm going to turn to the right just a little bit and as you can see guys we're already almost at the same distance as the first one. I think it was like 23,000 feet, the first one uh, test we did. And we're almost there. We still have 65% power left. So do you see that? So either the battery was partially toasted or it doesn't really matter in the, the low flight speed, that it's about, which was about half of this speed. Uh, so this normal mode looks like it's doing really well so we're just going to keep it at this and uh, keep on going i am touching the screen once in a while just to focus yeah so this is a great flight path right here so we're going to go a lot farther on this one i can tell already i just hope it'll come home so i'm going to go remember down to about 40 percent so hang in there stay tuned to this video because this may be a crazy nail biter it might be kind of fun Hopefully we don't have to do a search and rescue, but you never know. Okay guys, so you saw that I just canceled the return to home. I wanted to come back at around 57, 58%. That's the exact same thing I did in the last one, but we're already way farther than the last one. And it looks like the wind is kind of subsiding and then coming back. Uh, so it's just extremely variable around here right now. Um, but, you know, I think I'm gonna stay with you uh, on this last little percentage just to see what happens here. So this is a good angle. I mean, I think you guys let me know if you like this angle for my range tests. Uh, I, I would sometimes just do like this angle <laughs> so you have half sky and half ground but a lot of people were saying hey man if you just tilt it down to like around 45 degrees it's kind of a better visual when you're doing the range test so you guys can you comment in the description please and just let me know if you like this angle better throughout the range tests is it more entertaining to you you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down even a little bit more to right at my hand where it launched, right at zero. And because it looked like it's gonna go like 30 something feet up anyway when it starts to return to home. So I'm right at zero feet elevation. And all that means, remember, as I was explaining, is it just thinks it's zero from where I launched it in my hand. So anything above that or below that is gonna say plus or negative height. It does not know its distance from the ground on this reading right here it does have lasers on the bottom of it that once you get around 30 40 feet of the ground and you're coming down it will tell you how close the ground is if you're close to the ground but not if you're up here like this so guys 47 percent we're gonna keep pushing it or what yes we are i'm gonna remember i said i'm gonna go down to 40 because when we came back on that last one 
we had 10% left on the battery. So I'm gonna go right around 40. Risking it, yes, but it'll be fun. Okay guys, getting a little nervous here, 41%. Oh boy. What are we, 33,600, we're at 41%. Hopefully we can get to 34,000, that's 40%. I'm gonna get to 34 and do a return to home. Oh, 34, stopping and pushing return to home. Go, quick, quick, quick. All right, we went to 39%, guys. Oh boy. And this uplift it's doing is gonna use a little bit of power. Oh man, did I push it too far this time? Tell me what you think, guys. Stop here and make a comment and say, do you think I'm gonna come get back home or not? Or is this gonna be another drone, find my drone, search and rescue? <laughs> You tell me, I'd like to know your opinion on it because we're at 38%. We literally have freaking, geez, I don't even, what's the math on that? One mile is 5,280 feet. So we're at 32,000 right now. We're way the heck out here. I mean, that might be one of the longest I've done, uh, but it's gonna be close to, I think the Air 3 might be close. I think the Mavic 3 was the farthest I did on Maui. So, I don't know. I'll have had, remember the milestones popping up so you guys can see that. So anyway, what do we have? We don't have too much resistance. Uh, winds blowing from the side. Look at the bottom of the compass over there on the left-hand bottom. We're flying at 20, we're flying faster than we were flying out, right? So it looks like we got some tailwind, so we might be okay. But <laughs> geez, 35%. Oh gosh. When it says I've been recording the screen on this controller for seven minutes and 30, 17 minutes and 30 seconds, but then it says I only have 15 minutes left to fly on the drone, 14 when it's hitting gusts, 13. Geez, that's scary. But I know it'll fly hopefully below 0% to get back. We may destroy another battery, but we'll see. Anyway, let's mute that so it doesn't make us more nervous on the way home. Obstacle avoidance is all on again with the return to home. I could try to turn it off and, you know, push it home myself, but I'm pretty confident uh, in this return to home efficiency. I'm not going to touch it. Plus it's got some wind to its back, I think, backside. Ooh, 11 and a half minutes left. And we're still 27,000 feet out. Okay, may lose this one. The wind is blasting, I got to say, where I am. I mean, we're getting gusts of 20. You can hear that in the mic, you hear that? 20 to 25 from my right side. So the drone is getting hit at its, it should be getting hit at its left side right now, coming back. So, and guys, that whole flight, I mean, you tell me if you saw any glitches on this recorded FPV screen, and that's what I could see in my view. Go ahead and comment and tell me if you found, saw any glitches because I didn't see one. And that just goes to show how crazy this OcuSync 4 technology is. Just amazing. Boy, that blue sky sure does look uh, pretty. Well, look at the uh, RC. I didn't mention that. Um, the RC signal, when I turned around, you saw that it dropped to like 2 and 3 in the orange top right, the RC. Now it's back up to 4 white bars. And that could also be the interference from the houses over there, the Wi-Fi interference. You know, maybe it was giving it a hard time. Uh, one of the houses maybe had a frequency that was interfering or something, but it looks like it's back up to four now. That could also be how it's coming closer and the ground and the trees were actually blocking it. You know what I mean? For, a, for an instance. But, uh, man, are we going to make this home? Jeez, I hope so. 
that sky sure does look pretty beautiful. Just a beautiful day if it wasn't for a little bit of wind. But hey, it makes it more fun. And it looks like, look at the uh, horizontal line now, guys, in the compass. Looks like it's down steady. Okay, so not too much wind resistance over here. Low and slow. That's the way to go. We may make this. Let's see. Just under, f gosh, four miles left. Three something miles left to go at 20%. Oof, man, I'm getting nervous now. Oh boy. Well, at least we know we're flying as efficient as possible and the wind may be at our back. So that, those are the things we have going for us. Notice too, remember on the flight return when I turned her out in 50 or 49% on the last battery, the AR column here that's showing the return to home route turned back green. In the beginning it was orange and then it turned green. This one's not turning green anymore, so we may run out of power. Oh boy. Don't bite your fingernails all the way down, guys. Just hang in there. Okay, so here we go. Low battery return to home just popped up. So it really wants to warn us about what's going on here. And remember, right around 13%, it may start to try to land. So I'm gonna need to help this thing come home possibly boy this is gonna be a nail biter man okay it's still coming back if it starts dropping in speed I'm just gonna push it forward and keep it up about this height okay and you know it's different for every drone I think it's like kind of what they program the parameters of each drone to kind of start to force land at I couldn't believe it let me fly this thing f for below three volts when I was in the park flight testing it and that could be just uh, because they want you to get the drone back and destroy a battery, right? Which I think is reasonable. 10% guys, oh boy, we're still going at 26, critically low. Oh boy. We may make this though, 10%. And we have about two miles left. Just depends if the battery wants to hang on or drop every battery seems like a, it's a little bit different oh we lost our AR okay didn't want to do that anymore oh no 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 do not land okay here we go so right at about eight percent it's wanting to land oh sh no do not land nope oh crap Okay, well, it's still letting me push forward at about 10 miles per hour. Oh, geez, this is worse than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to let me go a lot further. Look how slow it's going, guys. Oh, boy. So I'm going to kind of try to go slowly up as far as I can. Oh, man, this is going to be a heck of a time getting this. So it's only going at six and six and a half miles per hour. So I don't think I'm gonna make it home, but you know what I see over here is I see a road. So I'm gonna keep going up. And I'm gonna fly over to that road. Okay. Yeah, boy, I really pushed that too far down to 40%. My goodness. I see that road there. I'm going to go just over here so that at least that's off the highway. I think I know what park that is. So I'm going to land it <laughs> in the trees. We're at 0%. Look at this, guys. I'm going to keep going up. I may ruin this battery, but I want to 
really want to try to land over here. Come on. Just get me over there. Come on, come on. I kind of want to show you guys the voltage on here real quick on the batteries. Come on, voltage. 3.20 volts still, so it should fly for a while longer. But look at that. Look at what these things can do. So, guys, I'm pushing all the way forward on the stick, and I'm only getting six and a half, seven miles per hour. And our height is going in the negatives. I just want to get as close to this place as possible so I can drive over here and retrieve it, all right? And you guys are gonna see how to retrieve your drone too if you lose it and how the find my drone works and everything. All right. So I don't wanna land it where there's gonna be people going, so I'm gonna just find a little clearing I'm just gonna keep flying it until it forces me to land. Oh crap. Welp. That's it guys, look at that. Totally lost control and it blacked out. So at least I'm in the forest. Jeez Louise guys. Holy smoke, so we lost that one. Um, but I think I know where that little park is. You see the the dirt roads over there. So I'm gonna jump on my little bike, get up there and try to find it. Man, I hope it didn't land in a tree. Gosh, I always do this. I try to keep pushing it. What I should have done, I should have found a little open area and I should have put the camera all the way down and I should have just stayed over that until it and started landing over there. So now it may be in a tree. So man, I really hope I can find this little mini 4 Pro, such a good drone. Anyway, guys, let's try to find it. All right, guys, so I found kind of a spot in the woods um, where I'm close to it. Let's see, is it here? Where is it? There it is. So I'm gonna zoom in. This is as far as I can zoom in. Kind of wish you could zoom in further. But as you can see, it lets you know the same thing like on the compass when you're flying the drone. That little blue uh, reticle is me. And then I just wanna point the arrow right at the drone and walk in that direction. So I'm hoping that since the Mini 4 has that omnidirectional obstacle avoidance, I'm hoping that maybe it kind of sorted through the trees and landed on the ground. That would be a super bonus, DJI, if you're listening. Even if you're low power mode, just give your drone enough power to avoid trees and land on the ground. That would be so awesome. I'm just gonna walk straight this way and be checking the trees. Definitely wanna watch out for rattlesnakes, right? Yeah, especially like these rocks. You never know what kind of animals in there. Just want to find my drone. Being that I was pushing forward, and I don't know if that kept it going more so than it was logging data, that definitely could have been an issue. So it should be, I'm like right on top of it as far as what um, Find My Drone says. I'm just going to keep on looking around this area. I mean, these rocks are kind of gray and the drone is gray. I'm just gonna kind of start searching this vicinity and like, you know, yeah, that looks like it, but I think that's a rock over there. Yeah, I think that's a rock. Anyway, I'm just gonna like do a 100 foot radius and just start circling around here and just, I'll chime in if I find it, guys. Is that it? Nope. Beer can, false alarm. So I should be facing right into where the drone is. And if I walk forward, uh, I just been checking all these trees really intricately. And also just the ground around here. And man, it's either in a tree because I'm dead pretty much right if I walk right over here. I'm pretty much dead center where the drone should be. And it looks like it's supposed to be right around where this tree is. It's not a very big tree with much foliage. So, 
you know, at every angle walking around, I kept looking at this tree and I cannot see a drone in there. So it's, I mean, maybe you guys can spot it. My eyes aren't super good. So maybe this is like a last ditch effort. Um, if I end up not finding it and producing this video, maybe you guys would have seen it uh, before I found it and you can point it out. But I'm literally just been like a hundred foot circle around this area. Just been combing every little nook and cranny and looking up every single tree with the mini three pro when I lost it in the snow, it was in the tree exactly where it said it was. Uh, even though I was pushing forward, just like I did on this one, I kept pushing forward and flying forward. So, right here is where it should be. I'm just kind of dumbfounded on where it could be. Can't find it anywhere. I mean, it very well could be in one of these trees, just like sitting up there. Um, but anyway, this is right around this area right here. This tree is where it said it landed. So, or it was the last GPS point it got on it. You know, it tells you which drone, the, which way the drone was facing when it lost connection at that GPS point, you could see. And I also went down a little bit, like a hundred feet or so in front of it, just in case it kept going a little forward and then dropped after it logged this GPS point. But for the life of me, man, I cannot find this thing. It literally could be anywhere. So anyway, let's talk about that uh, range test, guys. That was pretty phenomenal. Even though I took that uh, battery that had 12 uses on it down to below 3%, I think it would have possibly made it back more so than that new battery I just lost this drone with. Even though it was a little windier, it seemed like it had some wind towards the back. So I just honestly do feel that um, I could have made it back with that battery. A little bit disappointed in myself here, not disappointed in the drone really at all. It did phenomenal, but I'm just disappointed in myself with those, you know, last minute ditch tactics. I really need to stop panicking and get it in my head that I need to look for a place to land uh, before I lose the drone. Well guys, shucks. I've been looking for this thing for probably around four hours now. And uh, it's getting a little later in the evening and I don't wanna, I actually just don't have the energy to do anymore. So <laughs> I think guys, I'm gonna call it for today. And luckily it's a Friday. I'm gonna come back tomorrow on Saturday and try to get my kids to help me look for it. And I think I'm going to bring another drone, maybe bring the Mavic 3 that can kind of zoom in a bit and just go over the tops of the trees where I think it should have landed and just kind of scan for a while over there while the kids look around the perimeter. I still want to find this thing, so this search ain't over yet. All right, guys, sixth and final battery with the Mavic 3. Uh, been out here for two days. I used three batteries yesterday, and then I'm using, this is the last battery today, the sixth battery. I also went back the day I lost it with the Mini 3 Pro wasn't too great. This has got a way better camera with that seven times optical zoom. So this really gets it clear in the trees. Just wanted to show you guys kind of what it is to kind of search for a drone. I do have my wife and my son also help, helping me look. Uh, my daughter Sanaya helped me yesterday, but nothing yet. So just kind of searching these trees up and down as close as possible. You know, if it did land in the top of one, definitely not going to see it from the ground so just been putting this thing up going to get a little footage of the search and if we don't find it oh well we don't find it you can always come back another day it did kind of rain last night so the more it rains and the longer time the more it will kill it but well, we're just going to hand launch that sucker cinematic mode and with bypass on so i can just really search through these trees recording here on the drone in 4k so you can kind of see how it is to search for a drone here the mavic 3 is really good at like slow flight bypassing so i haven't nicked any branches or anything yet after six batteries there is the picnic area up there and 
what the mini three what the mini four does and other drones too is they take the last like 10 seconds of video before you lose connection and they save it in the controller and so you can look at that video but unfortunately i wasn't pointing the camera down when it cut out and just to let you guys know this is exactly where it said the drone the last known point but man we searched this area crazily like for three days and we couldn't find anything and i've just been doing this too you know from the ground we've been searching looking up we even got binoculars and everything but i've just been doing this just like at every tree in the area just getting as close as possible and then just kind of doing like a, a manual orbit and just checking you know seeing if i see anything in these branches but no luck yet man a little bit you know sad and frustrating but hey that's what happens when you try to do range tests like mine in the woods <laughs> what do you expect to happen right pushing it to the limits this stuff's gonna happen so then i go down and the um the bypass is really good because it's going to avoid branches. Like I said, I have not nicked one yet. That looks like the color of the mini. You see that? So this is the thing. It's just like all of these branches and rocks and everything are gray. But look at that. It, it looks like it could be the top of the mini 4 Pro. But it's honestly just a stump coming out of the tree. A branch that's been cut off or broke off. And the sun's hitting it just right. So it looks like the top of the mini. So... This seven time zoom is crazy. Look at that thing. So that's the thing. It's like when you're doing this kind of stuff, everything starts to look like what you're looking for. What I also tried to do is triangulate the last view of the Mini 4 Pro with the uh, Mavic 3 camera. But obviously they're probably a different focal length and wideness. So I'd, I didn't really get the accuracy I wanted because since I couldn't find it where it said it should be on the maps, I tried this way. I should have went just like this and then just started coming down like this. And that way, when it lost power, lost connection, even though I couldn't see the screen, it would have just come down and landed right in the opening like this. So that's exactly what I should have done. Anyway, guys, I'm just going to exhaust this battery. I still have about 62% left, but just wanted to kind of give you guys a little tutorial on how to find your drone and what not to do and what to do. Well, guys, I guess that's going to do it. Thank you, Mavic 3. Guys, check out the Mavic 3. They have a bunch of different Mavic 3s now. The Pro, the Cine. And I gotta say, man, this is like one of the best higher-end bang-for-your-buck cinematic drones. Or like almost professional type of drone. Just, you can see the video. is just unbelievable on this. We'll chime in in another video if we can find it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, the range test was definitely a nail-biter, especially that second round we went where I really pushed it. And that just goes to show, like, even in a little bit of wind, like, how stable and how far that little mini-series can go. Pretty amazing. Anyway, check the links down in the description for whatever I review here and some of the equipment I use. And I will see you in the next one. I want to try to do a tracking test with the Mini 4 Pro. So if I find it or if I can get a new one, I'm going to do that tracking test. And we're going to see, remember, if it hits that same tree that all of the other DJI drones hit. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.